Hi, I'm Cheryl and this is Manny and he's holding a bread basket or anything basket, anything you want to store in it. But it's a perfect way to present and store your bread at your holiday dinner table. So let's get started. You will need the following supplies. You will need one third yard of fabric for the outside one-third yard of fabric for the inside and you'll also need one-third yard of cotton batting. To save time on cutting I like to layer my fabrics and then you do one cut at a time for each piece. I'm using a nine inch bowl and how I've layered my fabrics. If you want extra insulation in your bread basket you like to serve all your bread hot then you could use two layers of cotton batting. It's up to you, one or two layers. Then I've placed down my fabric for the outside and then the fabric that's the lining and I've layered them all together. Take your bowl and trace around all of the sides. Then make sure before you cut it out that you place pins around to hold it the layers together so that the fabric does not slip. And then after you've done that, go ahead and cut on your drawn lines. If you are using a different size bowl than I am, remember mine's 9 inch, and if you're not sure how much fabric you need for the sides, then take a tape measure, wrap it around, and then add 1 inch to that measurement. After you have measured your bowl, you're going to use that measurement to cut out the fabric for the sides. So you're going to cut it eight and a half inches wide by whatever the measurement was for the distance around your bowl. So cut out your cotton batting. And remember, if you're using two, go ahead and use two. Or if you prefer one, that's fine too. And then your fabric for the outside and your fabric for the inside, your lining. Then you're going to do some decorative stitches. So you're going to layer your cotton batting with the fabric for the outside. Make sure you scatter pins all over the top to hold all the layers together. Then do some decorative stitch patterns. You can go straight across and then up and down. You can even do it on a diagonal. Use decorative stitching like this. It's called a serpentine stitch or even on a diagonal. Now I chose the serpentine on a diagonal. You can see it a little bit better on the back there. When you're doing it, make sure you use a walking foot and this helps to keep the layers of fabric together. Remember this is getting really thick and it's going to get even thicker when you start stitching all the different pieces together. So you can get a walking foot at sewing machine supply stores, sewing machine supply websites, and Amazon.com. Just enter the name of your machine and model number and that you want a walking foot and a variety of options will appear. You're also going to do it on the bottom piece. So use your cotton batting with the fabric for the outside and do some stitching on that also. You're going to stitch the bottom to the sides. So here's my circle piece bottom and here is the side piece. You're going to start three or four inches in from the edge here stitching it on. So line it up on the edge and I have set my machine to a quarter inch seam. So go ahead and make sure you do that quarter inch and you're going to just stitch a little bit and just slowly turn your fabric going around doing that quarter inch seam and keep lining your fabric up until you get all the way around. So take your time doing this. When you get about three inches away or so, take it out of your machine and then pin the edge down a little bit and bring the two ends together and you're going to mark where the two ends meet because that's going to be where you do your seam. So I'm just putting a mark here and a mark right here and then unpin this and bring your two sides together and then you're going to stitch that distance 
all the way down to the other end here. And if you have a lot of excess fabric here, then just go ahead and trim it off. I trimmed my side seam down to a quarter of an inch and then I pinned the rest of the edge down. And then after you've done that, go ahead and finish stitching all the way around. And make sure you've pinned that seam open. the lining together in the same way that you did the fabric for the outside except when you go to close up this side seam here you're not going to close it all the way at first so you're going to stitch about two inches down here at the bottom and two inches here up at the top and I recommend leaving a half inch wide seam allowance so that you have plenty of fabric to close it up later after we turn the basket front side out. Make sure the fabric for the outside is front side out and that the lining is now front side in. Insert this inside of the lining. Pin the edge up here and try and match your seam and also uh, pin the seams open. Then stitch a quarter of an inch up around the top edge. After doing that, then reach inside the opening and begin pulling the fabric through for the outside. Have the lining pulled out like this. And now you're going to close up the opening. Make sure your raw edges at the opening are folded inside. Pin it closed and then stitch very close to the edge along here. After that, push the lining back inside of the basket. Then fold the edges over anywhere from two to three inches, and then you're done. For other storage basket projects, go to the end of this video where you'll see a green screen and click on the links. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, would you please click on that old thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address, click on that bell so you receive the email notifications to your phone. I'm Cheryl and this is Manny and see you next time. Happy sewing!